Welcome back to Next Generation. We are here with another DIY. And another first, like every video we make. This is the first time we've ever painted anything outside, huh? So today we're painting our patio floor. Never painted a floor inside or outside. And this is outside, so it's even more challenging. So our patio has this one little dip. Water just puddles up there. Basically, it's a slippery spot. So we really want to be sure that our patio isn't slippery and we really want it to last a long time obviously because this isn't something we want to do every year so we did a lot of research for this video to make sure that we did things right we didn't know a lot about paint until now but we're going to share these tips and tricks with you guys so there's a lot of prepping that's involved with painting uh, really anything but especially on the exterior of your house majority of the work that you're going to do is prep work but this is what's going to make it last the longest yep. and it's going to be the safest so it's not a slip and slide <laughs> for your front door. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to cut corners here because the prep work and all the early stages lead up to a great final product. You don't want your paint to be chipping a week from when you did it. So here's how our floor looks before. We don't hate it. It's a beautiful tile. Okay, guys, so we're not dissing anyone who may have this. But red isn't our favorite color. We love neutrals. I'm sure you can tell by our videos. So we just wanted that to reflect on the outside of our house. So that's why we're painting it. You can always do fun patterns on top of it. We're not that experienced yet, so we're just doing a solid color. They also have these really cool flakes yeah, that we were considering cool. adding, but we heard that this is best to use on more of an indoor type floor, like a garage or something that's enclosed. So just know there's lots of options. We're basically just doing the simplest thing. Another reason why we're painting the patio, you can see, you know, our brick is red. But in a week from now, our house will be white. And we also have this exact same patio floor in our backyard. So he'll be painting the back, I'm painting the front, and the front has the best lighting for filming. So you're only gonna see me painting, but just know we're both doing this for the first I time. I painted too. The back patio is bigger, okay? So another first in this video, I've never pressure washed anything. I know this is a shock, it was a shock for me too because I'm obsessed now and I want to pressure wash everything. So we rented a pressure washer from Home Depot. It was only around like $25. So you first want to start with a little test spot to see which nozzle that you want to use. A few of the nozzles didn't work too well. I needed one that was really small so that it could really knock off the mildew and algae and stuff that we have built up on the ground. And then we're going to do the most satisfying part and pressure wash the whole patio floor. Didn't even know what it looked like under there until I did this. <laughs> the grout is bright. Didn't know that. <laughs> you kind of want to go in a flow from one side to the other. You don't want to jump around. One, because it makes it easy to see the clean spot versus the dirty spots. And two, you don't want to miss any spots because getting rid of the dirt will really help the paint stick. So like I said, you don't want to cut corners. It's like coloring, an adult coloring book. That's what I feel like. After you've pressure washed, some of the dirt that you washed off is going to be sitting on top of the tiles or on top of your floor. So you are going to want to wash it off after you pressure wash. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense, but hey, this was a first for me too. And I was shocked that well, I had to wash after washing. It's because the pressure washer is knocking up the dirt that the hose can't. And then you're taking the hose and you're removing all the surface dirt that you just busted up from the tile. Yes, so we are gonna hose it off, rinse it clean, get any leaves or dirt or anything that may still be on the ground off so that it's completely clean. All right, so the next step, now that we have a clean surface, we are gonna prime the patio. One thing that you need to make sure you do when you're picking your primer is make sure it's oil-based. You don't wanna use a latex-based paint here because it's not gonna stick, it's not gonna last. And when you hit it with the hose to clean later, it's gonna knock it all off. And you're gonna be like, wow, well that lasted like a week. So make sure it's oil-based. Ours is a stain proof and sealer, so it's super great. It'll last hopefully forever. <laughs> Also with this step, we are going to use an angle brush to get all of the edges and luckily since our house is going to be painted, we don't have to worry about if we get a little on the brick because I did. And you can also use the angle brush for in the grout or the mortar, whatever this is called in between the tiles because this part really soaks up the paint and it's like a divot in the ground so it's a little bit harder to get in there with a roller so I found it a lot easier to use an angle brush for this to just go over all the lines and then go over it with the roller after. Make sure when you're picking your roller that you get an exterior roller 
I would go with an exterior rough surface roller because these are a lot fluffier. They have a thicker roll diameter. They have a fluffier roll space, so they allow more paint and that fluffier space will get into those grout areas. We wanted to make sure we completely covered the patio with the primer. We didn't want even one drop showing of our previous floor because the primer is what's really going to help the paint stick to the ground. Yep. So if you don't do a thick or a good enough primer coat, then your paint isn't going to stick as well. So we wanted to be sure that we did the primer right the first time so we're not back out here redoing the floors. <laughs> most rollers will attach to the end of a broomstick so if you want to extend it make it longer so you don't break your back trying to roll the ground I suggest doing this I didn't even realize the first time around you guys will see me on the ground rolling and then he reminded me that we have a broomstick that fits on the end so don't be crazy like me this might be kind of an obvious tip but if you get a little excited when you go to paint and you just start painting everywhere, make sure you start in an area that makes sense so that when you're finished painting, you can get inside of your house. So if you want access to go back through the front door, start on one end and work your way to the front door. We have a front gate that closes in the front of our patio and we wanted to be able to close this so nobody walks on the floor. So I worked my way from the front door to the gate so I could close it, put a wet paint sign, and nobody go walk on it right after. So do this, okay guys? Did you do it? So oil-based paint takes a long time to dry. So before we went and added our first coat of actual paint, the color that we want, we waited at least 24 hours. And this is the paint that we ended up using. It already came in a charcoal color, so this was great. Yeah, I didn't was. have to make a decision on what color I wanted because it came already a color. And we didn't have to worry about them mixing the wrong color paint or anything crazy. So with the paint a little different than the primer, instead of just slapping on a super thick coat like we did with the primer, we're gonna do two light coats of paint so that it's nice and even, there's no blotchiness or drips anywhere on the ground because this is gonna stand out a lot more. So yeah. you wanna be sure it's nice and smooth. And also this paint is a glossy finish I was really nervous about this because I've read a lot online that patio paint floors tend to be a little slippery, so once I saw glossy, I was really scared about it. It looks slippery. And this is not slippery at all. I'm so happy about it because guys, we were going to have to repaint the floor if this was slippery. It's not at all. It's great. Like a freshly waxed basketball gym floor. It was so, like almost like tacky, like your feet would kind of stick to it. It's not because the paint was wet, it was dry. <laughs> I think it has something to do with maybe the oil base. And for our size front patio, one gallon of paint was exactly enough yeah. for two coats. Make sure you like it, do a test sample, see how it dries, even if you would like to make sure the color looks good, it's not slippery, before you just go commit and do your whole patio <laughs> floor. and then walk through the whole house. So now we have gray floors inside too. Gray paw prints everywhere. So of course we live in New Orleans where it rains almost every single day and after the first coat, luckily it had a day to dry, but- It rained. It rained. So <laughs> I had to re-clean the patio floor before I could do the next coat. So as you see, I'm re-cleaning the floor. That's what happened. It was a whole process.
All right, do you like the floor? What do you think? Would you paint yours? It's a pretty bold move if you ask me. I love it, I think it looks really good. Don't walk on your floors just yet. You may be tempted to because they just look so good. You just wanna go walk all over it. Or but you should wait. <laughs> you might wait forever because it just looks glossy and it continues to look wet. I don't know. <laughs> they recommend for oil-based paints 24 hours before it's dry, 72 hours before you walk on it, and if you're gonna put anything on the patio, like say planters or anything, 30 days. I know, isn't I'm that crazy? Dying, guys, I just wanna go put a plant out there so bad. I, we're like counting them down. Put something down and then try to remove it the next day. And if the paint comes up, you should have listened to me, 30 days. <laughs> we may even wait seven days more because the 30 days ends on a Monday. I already checked my uh, calendar. Gotta wait. And I wanna wait so we can film it and share it with you on how we do our transformation of our patio. So stay tuned for that. You guys, we did scrape the floor with a scraper just to be sure that it looked good and it lasted. And guess what? You had to do the test. No chips, zero. So it's gonna last a while. So that is all on how we planted our pot. What? So that's all for our DIY patio paint job. The water just beads right off too because it's oil based. It does. It's like a rain -X floor. So I see there won't be any mildew mo mold or mildew. Or, or algae. Or any of that stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, Bye. guys.